Hi, this is Steve. I'm Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we are going to review the first two episodes of the new Star Wars series, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, I've been waiting for this one for literally years. You know, we got teased that there was going to be an Obi-Wan movie, mm -hmm. and those plans got canned. Uh, but they decided to convert it into a limited series, which Ewan McGregor described as a six-hour movie, which yeah, that's, I'm fine with pretty that. Pretty much I, I like the, the TV format better. It's l the longer format. You have more time yeah. to develop characters, to develop plot. You're not trying to squeeze things into a two-hour movie. Now, of course, if it's if it's well-written, you know, like Rogue One, the two-hour movie is great, but I think Obi-Wan deserves a miniseries, don't you think? Without a doubt. I mean, Absolutely. you know, we, we everything is converting to TV if you, in a way. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. movies have changed quite a bit. I think this content is perfect for television. Perfect. Mandalorian proved mm -hmm. that you could do these extended shows about these single characters. I mean, I think as a matter of fact, you know, let's say it's roughly what? Like, you know, five hours, six hours mm -hmm. of content. That's really not that much content if you mm -hmm. think about it. It's like a trilogy of movies, basically. Yeah. So we're going to do a spoiler-free overall review, and then we'll get to, we'll give you a warning before we get to the spoiler-laden segment of our review. So first, general impressions. I know we're a little bit of differences on the, on the, the panel here. Um, I enjoyed it. I liked it. It was enjoyable to watch. I think Ewan McGregor once again stole the show. He was fantastic, yeah. and he sustained me through those first two episodes. I just love watching him, and I love watching him as Obi-Wan Kenobi. And again, I, you felt like you were back in the Star Wars universe, and there was enough good things happening. So, um, you know, if there's four episodes left. There's, a, there's some questions and open plot threads, but... At this stage in a series, I, I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, that they're going to, they're going to satisfyingly um, at least give me some kind of, a, of justification or meaning for the choices that they're making that are manifesting early on in these early episodes. So we can't judge the whole series by these first two episodes. Right. Of course So not. I give it basically a positive review. It's worth watching. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. Jay. <laughs> um, okay, you're, you're so picky when it comes to Star yeah, I'm picky. I'm picky because I just want I want the writing to be exquisite. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know I'm never going to be as thrilled as I was when I was, you know, what eight nine years old, sitting yeah. in the movie theater watching mm -hmm. the first Star Wars never, movie. Never will. Um, the the show is fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I, I do agree that. Uh, you know, the acting is 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 good. There's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff there. Um, but there's a problem, and, and the problems that I'm seeing typically come from a, a lack of, of writing vision. You know, they made some some mistakes that I'm not happy about. They, they're they, dubious, though, a mistake. I mean, they're not, it's not yeah. definite a mistake, though. They're it, not definite mistakes. Mistakes meaning they, they didn't execute things as well as they there could have. There was some have. poor execution. Yes. Yeah, I agree, and we'll talk about that. There, there was some, some scenes were poorly executed where you knew what they were going for, but like, nah, I didn't believe it. But really what matters, yeah. and, and this is this is like the, the truest review that I think any of us can give. In the end, and you said it, yeah. you watched it, you enjoyed yeah. it, you had a good time. I watched it, I was chomping at the bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, champing and then at the it, bit, but yeah. it's champing at the yeah. bit. Everybody says it right. I know. That's okay. Right. That sounds so weird, champing. It's because old word. Yeah. yeah. So bottom line is though, when I, the end, the second episode ended, I wasn't thrilled. I wasn't mm -hmm. like, oh my god, it's freaking Obi Wan. I know. I was more like, Woo, what's going on? Like I'm, I, you know, I was a little yeah, disappointed yeah. At, at some of the things that I saw. I felt a little, um, like you know that feeling you get when you're like. They were rushing this. There was probably way too many cooks in the kitchen. You know, like when you mm -hmm. when, when certain corners are not polished a particular way. You know, we've seen it a million times, yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get that feeling like they, they were, there was too many people talking about this behind the scenes yeah. for them to like let the writers do their job. And I don't know that that's the case. I think what the real challenge is you have a, basically again six hours of content here, and you're telling uh, you know a pretty intense story over that period of time. But it's serialized. So like we're watching two episodes and we're going to watch one episode a week or something like that until, until the other rest of the four episodes drop. The, the writers have to manage the, the experience of the viewer each episode. So it's while I'm willing to watch the whole series before I decide you know, how much I like it or not, um, you, you still want to come out of this first two episodes that they drop thinking this is going to be awesome. Of course. Not yeah. 
they better make it awesome before the end of the of the series. And that's how I feel, though. I, I know. Feel I, like, I hear you. But some series, like we, you know, there's plenty of, of excellent series that we that we've watched, like Midnight Mass, for example, which is it's a very slow burn at, at the beginning, but it's worth the investment. But but using Midnight Mass as the yeah. example. There was a a buildup, like yeah. the tension is building as we go, and and this what the, my impression after the end of the second episode was they're still setting up the the the, the plot, yeah. They're they're world building and they're showing you what's going to happen, yeah. And that isn't as satisfying. I know, but that's the real you know when you have a real genius writer and editor like a showrunner where they can do that while making each episode a gem, you yeah. know and. All right, they didn't do that. These first two episodes were not gems. You you were you were very much looking at them like like you're forced to look at them in the context of the whole series because by themselves they were just okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you said this is six episodes. Yeah. So that actually makes me more pessimistic and a little bit more disappointed because now I'm yeah. thinking, all right, it's a third over. Yeah. It's a third over now. There's only four more episodes, yeah. twice what we've already seen. So I think. They really got to bring it now, and I think you char characterized it very well, Steve, when you said that uh, you know you just you, you want to be left after the second episode, be like, yeah, I'm like really psyched, yep. and I, I enjoyed it. It was a pleasure. Human was fantastic, and the layers and the detail and the Easter eggs are all over the place. I mean, they throw out comments that 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 reference um, like unused script Star Wars scripts <laughs> or comics that you never even heard of. It's like yeah. they, you, these people are fans. They yeah. know these things inside and out. But but uh and I I'm, I hope they really bring it for the, these last four episodes. It was enjoyable but could have been a little bit punchier. And mm -hmm. the main the main you know big bad for um for uh, you know for the main character I think Reva. is you know Reva is you know, she's impressive in a lot of ways, but not like the main. Is she the main big bad? Well, Don't know. Well, I said to Steve earlier, I mean, something I, more. We're, like you said, about we're a third of the way through this show. Like, what are they going to bring in yet another bad guy? Like, they, this is it. They've yeah. done it. They've introduced their bad, the bad guys right. to us. Right. Right. We'll get into that question okay. more yeah. with the spoilers. But yeah, I think we could talk in general terms. One of the key features of Star Wars is that they have, Star Wars has the best villains in science fiction. Yep. Darth Vader, to me, is the quintessential villain. And, and right behind him, the Emperor was a the fantastic Emperor villain. The Emperor was fantastic. I mean, there's so many of them. And, and even um, the Inquisitor, who's in this series, if yeah. you've watched Star Wars Rebels, was a great villain for Star Wars Ve yeah. Rebels. And, and also, Star Wars villains, you know, they do have a certain characteristic to them. They they tend to be very um, low key. It's like they project their menacing fear through being calm and confident. Yes, you know, totally. It, it, they don't have to get angry and get in your face. They're not maniacal. But yeah, because even Darth Maul, like Darth Maul, was probably the most at the other end of the spectrum of all the the, the mm. dark side villains, the Sith villains. But even he was he was menacing and a little bit, you know, like animalistic, but even he was re re restrained. Yeah. He didn't say much. And he just, like, you don't have to be over the top when you're that powerful, just your mere presence. Like, Darth Vader never got in anybody's face. You know, he yeah. just was just being there, and he would make the most understated statements, <laughs> and people would crap themselves, you know? That's a Star Wars villain. And Reva was basically given one note, and it wasn't that note. It exactly. was it was more of like the, the drill instructor kind of in your face, yelling, directly threatening. The implied threats are always worse than the direct threats, mm -hmm. right? Like Darth but, Vader never threatened anybody. Well, you know, the the interesting thing is like you know, these characters, these other characters that yeah. aren't Darth Vader that are bad guys. None of them can punch as hard or as high as Darth Vader. But, you, but you're right, Steve. When we were talking about this yeah. earlier, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, there is a tone that has been created yeah. inside the Star Wars universe. And it's very effective. And it is very effective. Like the idea of the Empire and the, mm -hmm. like the heavy hand and all of that. And then when— They're you, lawful evil. They're, exactly. they're fascists. Exactly. They're, you know, they're, they're not chaotic. Yeah. So they missed a, a couple of things that I would consider to be canon because of that. And that, that's really yeah. writing and execution. But again, the thing is, I'm willing to say, let's see where they go yeah, with sure. it. Yeah, okay. Because they could pull it out. Absolutely. And, but, but, and that's hard to do. If they, again, if, they're, if the writers are looking at it as six episodes, it's like, okay, that, that, that's fine. And maybe it works as the whole package 
and I'm willing to give it the time, but that's part of making, you have to make each segment work as well. Of right. Course, Here's know? an example. Remember when you first saw the gunslinger in The Mandalorian? Yeah. yeah. That took my breath away. I yeah. was obsessed with, I was searching for him to see what else he had done and to get images. I made it, Bad Batch, I made him the Bad cover, Batch. the cover of my phone. I mean, this guy was beautiful. So, <laughs> no matter how you looked at him, just visually, how he and talked, again, very, what he did, he, yes, very understated, understated, very understated, very understated, well, fantastic. So everything to do with that villain was, was quintessential Star Wars. Yep. Yeah. The way that they introduced him, like he was, he was a, a, just a man on a, a, the horizon with the, yeah. you know, with the, you could see the heat coming up, right? Very Western-y, very pulp, oh, yeah. you know, very, very pulpy. Western, he was very space Western, yeah. And he was, he was exactly what Steve said. He was, he was not over the top. He didn't raise his voice. He was calm and collected, but he was menacing as all hell. Yeah. Uh, that's, and that's why I immediately like, thought their execution yeah. of him was perfect. Now it's okay to give villains range and different aspects of that, but you know, this didn't didn't hit it out of the park for me. Yeah. And that that was the weakest element of the first two episodes, I thought was you, know, you had the Grand Inquisitor, which actually again this is also a challenge when you have yeah, characters cool. You have characters that are going from one of the cartoons to one of the live action properties. And that's that transition's hard. They did it well with the gunslinger. But I, I thought, when I'm thinking, God, the cartoon version of the Inquisitor was more menacing than yes, the live action yes. version. That's, yes. you know, that's it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a There's problem. a problem. Right, Some characters work better in animated than they do in live action. I think we need to get to the spoilers now. Spoilers. All oh, right. All right. We are in the spoiled part of the show. Now. Part of the show. All right. So let me let me say again, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I liked watching it. You know, I, but give me your specific things you didn't like. But there's, there's a, there's a. I have a laundry list of things. Like keep in mind, I, I, I just want to make sure you understand. I, I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. I love it. Um, I'm being particular because Star Wars is a thing that I've always been particular yeah. about. There's, there's a, there's way more Star Wars content now than there ever was. Plus, we're spoiled by really awesome writing out there. The, the, yeah. the bar is so high. It's now. so high. Game of Thrones changed everything. We're connoisseurs of like really good writing like if you don't wow me every episode that's on you you know like, yeah. yeah totally seriously and this is our favorite brand or one of our favorite brands you know, top, so top two favorite brands so we're gonna we're gonna nip the hell out of it okay so i'll start with things that are a little more general that, yeah. that that are suffused throughout the whole thing i thought the cinematography was was basically average yeah it wasn't there was nothing that they did with the camera work or the lighting. I mean, I you know I bring up lighting because lighting is incredibly important. It's one of those things that they do it right, you don't really notice it. Well, it's it, also something the, the camera work is something that's iconic Star Wars. Yep. And like Star Wars, ha, like there's always got to be an element that's huge, right? You always got to feel like you're being dwarfed by some immense thing in yep. Star Wars. It's just part of the Star Wars vibe. We haven't really gotten that yet. You know, we have, we're, we're back on Tatooine, which is fine, but you know, we're Tatooine. It's like, you gotta give a, sh this is a big big galaxy out there. You know, it's kind of a small stage. It's almost like they made the, the Star Wars universe a little bit smart, smaller. Then we go to a new planet, which is great, but it looks just like other places that we've been in Star Wars. Yep. So it wasn't, didn't really feel new or yeah. exotic. Um, but even so, we, like if you just rewatch the first episode, yep. rewatch the entrance of the bad guys. I did. When they land, right? <laughs> The camera work is so uninspired. Yeah. They're using a wide shot. I thought that their post production, like the filter that they use on it, like the in the preview, and Steve and I specifically, I think you and I mm -hmm. talked about this too. It was dark and it looked it looked dangerous and gritty, like the preview for this show, right? Yeah. Then when you watch the show, it doesn't have the look of the preview. The preview editor was different, of course. Yeah. So <laughs> so better. they pulled the you know the old switcheroo on you, where they you know they 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 make you think it's going to be totally in a different place. It is. It's bright. The lighting is is not good. Yeah. I just and on that, uh, and I think along those same lines is that it wasn't gritty enough. It wasn't gritty enough. So, I mean, yeah. I think, you know, Ewan McGregor, again, hit it out of the With park. With all that Obi-Wan. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, so you, like, you, he totally made you believe his angst. You know, he, he was in a very yeah. dark, lonely, sad place. I mean, it was really, it was painful to listen to him say, the Jedi have lost, it's over. He let he lets people die. Like, he, it's like so... He's defeated. He's defeat, defeated. Yeah. And, like, we really totally. feel that. And then, you know, he gets basically the reluctant hero, which is a co an old, you know, common theme, gets dragged into, you know, having to rescue Leia. And so that starts the adventure. Good. Although, the, you know, he digs up the lightsabers. There could have been more of a moment there. Like, again, not in his acting, not in what happened, 
but in the camera work, in the music, yeah. something, that was a moment where you, we could have felt the transition that we were turning a corner with him. They didn't really play it up. When nah. when um, Leia gets kidnapped, one guard gets shot, you know, that would have been a good scene to like, have some more dead bodies there. Yeah, like, no. you know, just Or just something, yeah. just like, for example, and this is also my, that's the worst scene in the first two episodes, was Leia laying The chase scene. Yeah. Oh yeah. on, on everything about it was bad. Yeah. Why was she alone in the woods? They are supposed to be protecting her from the freaking emperor, and she's she's allowed to go to an unsecured, open, you know, open woods where it's hard to find her. Mm -hmm. Of course, she gets kidnapped there because she was vulnerable. And the chase scene, the chase was, scene was horrible. horribly was horrible. executed. Kind of hard to watch. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit hard to watch because, you know, the idea was she's small and the, she knows and the woods. Ample. So she's using her knowledge of the trees to duck, you know, to get away from these four grown adults chasing her, but they didn't pull it off. The execution was horrible. Yeah. You know, it was just like, it was like cartoonishly laughable. Like some guy just runs into a branch that's chest high and that flummoxes him and she gets away. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Yeah. Yep. And then, you know, then the guards go to find her. One guard gets shot and that's it. And she's kidnapped. There should have been like, you know, 20 dead guards strewn, strewn about. Like they, like they really had to have infiltrated and and we should have been just, we should have felt more menaced for Leia. I didn't really feel that Leia was at risk. That's the, you know, when you're- And that's when, all the directing, in my opinion. When your feelings aren't engaged, like yeah. if you're, we're watching a young, you know, you know, Princess Leia, this is yeah. Princess Leia, and she's vulnerable. Yeah. And we're, and the fact that I watched that scene, it was basically like, whatever, you know, like yeah, I walked yeah. away from that scene feeling kind of disappointed. I should have been feeling what she was feeling. Yeah. You know, that's the whole point. Because they didn't manipulate us cinematographically. So yeah. Talk, yeah. So, all right, I'll give you a couple of more all for right. instances. Okay. The the whole idea of, I forget the actor's name, but the guy that was playing the fake Jedi. Yeah. Okay. Number one, I, I'm, I'm not crazy about the actor. I think it was a very odd choice. He's basically a comedian. Yeah, he's a comedian. He's a comedian. He's not basically a comedian. He, he's, he's a, a comedian. comedian. He's a comedic yeah. actor. Okay. Okay. Um, I loved him. I didn't think he was funny. Mm -hmm. And the idea that he was playing a Jedi, when the Jedi are like hunted, it's it's a it's a stupid scam. Like his scam was, I'm going to pretend to be a Jedi and help people, but being a Jedi, even on the planet that he was on, I mean, mm -hmm. it was it's a like, deadly proposition. It's a dangerous. It's a dangerous pastime. It, it was For sure. It was completely unnecessary. Oh, the, all right. The, wait, all let me finish. Right. The kid, the kid that told Obi Wan, "Hey, I got someone that can help you." Instead of him saying, "Like I know where a Jedi is," all he had to do was say, "You know, I know a guy that knows, you know, knows this city better than anyone, and you could pay him to help it. You, you know, you can go pay him, and he'll give you information that you need." Didn't have to say he was a Jedi. Then when Obi Wan went in to see him, they they didn't need to have that whole like Jedi thing, like Obi-Wan could have just been disappointed that he was scamming people mm -hmm. and maybe did something about it. But th then, okay, let me continue down his pathway. So he's a scam artist, but is he helping people? Because it's confusing. You don't know if he's actually so, helping people or if he's scamming people. Then he, then he's like a good guy. Then he seems like a bad guy again. It was like really like a not, greedy good Samaritan. Kind of like of. Han Solo. He was definitely the Han Solo character. Oh, don't series. please don't compare but, him to but Han that's Solo. The, but that's the, that's what that's the role that he's playing. He's the sleazy good guy. That's that was the idea. The character is Haja Estri. I, yeah. I, when I realized what was happening, I th I kind of loved that he was being a like a fake psychic. This guy was being a fake. It's redundant. A, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> he did it in a way too. The was, way, his the quality of his acting was poor. But it didn't have to be good though. He's scamming gullible people. I know, but I'm not supposed to sit there as a person in the audience and go, wow, the actor didn't do a good job acting that scene. Like he, I get the it idea. He was supposed to be cheesy. He's a cheesy backstreet scamster scamming gullible, desperate people. It wasn't executed. But though. here's the thing. This is where I, I think, I, I disagree. I thought it was, I thought it was cute. And I like the idea. I like Absolutely it. dangerous to play a, a hunted you know, profession, yeah. but it's a big galaxy and you're in the outer rim and he is in the sewers. And he, I mean, if any, if he, if anyone would think I'm far enough away from the empire that I could get pull off this scam, it would be someone okay, like him. So let's continue. I have one. But hang on. The other thing is <laughs> I suspect yeah. there's more backstory to this character Maybe. than we know. And we have to just let it play. Uh, I get you. I give him, give I him a you. little bit. Of, I mean, we'll see. I might, I I might be wrong. We'll find All out. All we could do is talk about what we, we've seen so far. Like, no, that's not true. Cause we, there's a whole big universe universe that we could draw upon and when you know you're a third of the way through a, through a movie 
or through a series, you wait and see how it plays yeah, out. Yeah, so now our, our, our right, established... Right, think about it. We wouldn't re be reviewing a movie a third of the way through the I movie. I totally agree. That's basically what we're doing. I understand. So you have to make an adjustment where you say, all right, I, I think this character is probably more complicated than what they've let us see so far. At this if, point... If I'm right, there might be a payoff. If I'm wrong, all right, you'll have a point. At this point in the movie, yeah. this is when I turn to the two of you guys and go, what the hell is this? What the, you know, would they give it time. <laughs> okay, no, right, give it time. Just eat my popcorn So <laughs> he's the established bad guy in yeah. the show who's hunting Jedi. Mm -hmm. And he's pretending to be a Jedi and giving people hope on the Jedi name. Yes. And she doesn't kill him. That's because she reads his mind and realizes that he's full of shit and he's not worth his time. But this is where this is where they I think they they broke the illusion of this character because she should have, in all ways that you measure her, she should have killed him. Yeah. I, I agree with that. It was weird that she didn't kill him. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And because it doesn't matter if he's real or not, it matters that his he's sending a message. He's yes. saying Jedi equals hope. I agree. I agree. She should have done it just to squash hope. Right. I totally but agree. But maybe you're right. Maybe there's something there. Maybe there's something know. there. There probably I is. Because I thought it was weird that they were still focusing on this guy, this yeah. charlatan. But he'll okay. come back. So another thing. Now th this is. Th <laughs> yeah. We're, nitp we're, we're nitpicking a little bit, but I felt like Obi Wan. I know he was not being a Jedi for 10 years. If he hadn't turned on his lightsaber probably in I 10 years. I think he really was and the cutting was himself good. off from the, from the Force. And that's the only thing that makes sense is that yeah. he had to stop using the Force so they couldn't yes. find him. Yeah. I get it. That's it. But he, he really seemed, I don't want to say he's, he wasn't a bumbling idiot, but his detective work, the use of his brain, he's on the planet, he's looking for, he's looking for Leia. And the first thing he does is walk up to a guy that's like the, the harbor master, you know, the port guy. Yeah, and he says, I'm looking for a little girl. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that he says. He's basically saying, here, let me show you all my cards. Mm -hmm. where, where, is the, where is his 20 years of being a Jedi, all of the experience that yeah. he got? He should have been super clever. He should have been just as deadly as the bad guys in a clever way. You know what but I, mean? I think that they're still in the he's like even Leia said you look like old and broken like you look like he's a broken down old guy at this point. If they have to tell you, if they no, have, but it, they didn't. If they showed us, but she saw it. That was about her character being perceptive. I know, but 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 I, I got it. We got it. They should. They, no, they, listen, made, that, they made that point. They a lot. They, I think. <laughs> but no, they did. But that's that's the point. At this stage, in, in Act One, we're supposed to be like, oh, poor Obi Wan is broken but down. Steve, he's he not, hasn't used the Force in ten years. He could barely beat these thugs. No, but he is still Obi Wan Kenobi, though intellectually. And he he's still pulls it out at the end. He managed to save Leia but, with the but Force. It, it was it, it was bad writing because. When he, even what he did, the, the decisions he made, and the, if you rewatch that 10 minutes of the show, yeah. when he's figuring out where she is and everything, well, I, it, it doesn't work. I will grant you that the writing about the, everything that happened uh, on Dayu, was that right, Daya or Daya, Daya um, was a little loose. You know, like the whole chase scene there was like, you know, when Obi Wan catches up with Leia, suddenly the bad guys are no longer shooting at him. I mean, yeah, I mean, yes, you know, yeah, it didn't quite. Yeah, that was annoying. It, it was not well. It wasn't tight. Battle scenes, combat scenes, chase scenes, have to be tight. They have to be edited tight. tight. I mean, the editing there is so critical. If you ever like watch um, a documentary about how a movie was edited, like mm -hmm. the French Congo, so this whole thing about how the French Connection was edited, it's like famously like the best edited movie in all of history, right? And it's just, and you, and when someone's explaining to you the editing choices and how that contributes to the, again, the viewer's yeah. experience of the movie, it's really, it's such a, a fantastic art form. And then you begin to notice when movies are not edited so well, and when they lose you, like they didn't, the things don't quite hang together. That's so the same thing with lighting. Scene, as soon as you yeah. understand it and have thought about it, and you know, it's glaring in the fourth dimension, you're, you're not, you're thinking <laughs> right. about it more as an art form and not yeah. as what's. You know, I start to notice lighting with everything that I look at. Like every time I'm in a movie, I'm like, oh, the lighting was good. You know, I guess the average right, person right. might not notice it. But, but some things also, it's like it's good if you don't notice it. You know what I mean? That's the point, though. Because really, if you're noticing it, it's taking you out yeah, of the movie. Exactly, exactly. If it's some, some things, if they're per done perfectly, you don't even notice them. You just enjoy the experience. Yeah. Um, unless you're like looking because you have a technical eye and you're looking for specific things. So, yeah, I agree. The, the execution of the action on, that, on, on the planet. Uh, where where where, um, where Obi Wan was rescuing Leia yeah. was not good. Uh, I have another point. Yeah, I thought that the Leia actress was too young. Too young. 
It, it, so she's 10 now. Her birthday's in a few days as we record this. Yep. Um, so that means she was 8 when that was recorded, the, and Leia's supposed to be 10. That's a big two years. She looked young. Yeah, she did. To be a 10-year-old Leia. And, yep. that, and I think that took a little bit away from her gravitas. I mean, the mm. actress pulled it off, and I thought that, you know, the, the, the sassy but insightful uh, Leia would work. So they, the, I think the writing of Leia worked. But it, the, 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 uh, the actress being so young took me out of it a little it, bit. At times, yeah. I... Th I, I, it took me out because I felt like, oh, this is an adult writing ki a kid's dialogue. Yeah, she's supposed to be precocious, but I get that. But it just felt that way. Yeah. Like you know, that that means precocious. that. What's that? Was she a little too precocious for you? Yeah, yeah, but I. I, it I think really, she, she wasn't for the ten-year-old Leia. She was for the eight-year-old. Yeah, actress. yeah. She just that, needed to be yeah, older. It yeah. would it would have sold much better if she was and, a little bit older, a little bit a little bit more mature. And usually, you know, they cast. Older, older people. people. Like you, you cast a twelve-year-old to play a ten-year-old. But I will but, say that little girl kicked ass. But she did. She yeah, did a she great did. job for what she did. She did, definitely like captured some of yeah. Leia. Um, you know, totally, I agree. And, and maybe got, that's why they used her. But I yeah, did. And you're like, that's she wants to be ten years old. Yeah. And to see that planet, we've never been on that planet. Alderaan. You know, Alderaan. We've never really been there before. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Uh, the casting that they did for her parents, of course, the, the actor. Smith, yeah, oh God! Yeah. I mean, that guy has an age. He's yeah. great. I love him. He's, love he's like he's on. He's you know, so how, how about this? How old was Alec Guinness when he played? Oh my God! He's, like, he's, he's in his fifties, right? No, he's sixty-two. He was sixty-two. How old is is you and McGregor now? Right now, he's in his fifties. Fifty-one. Okay. So it's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's you know, in ten years, they'll they'll everything will sync up. He'll he's be all gray. gray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know that the people will comment. He looks a little bit young to be you know, like Guinness in ten years, but actually the ages actually line up. Yeah, yeah well, I love, his mannerisms are great. You oh, really yeah. see Alec Guinness when he's oh. like tweaking his beard and stuff. Without great. a doubt, I know he love just him. you can't take anything away him, from man. him. He's, he's doing he's, he's doing an incredible job. Now, all that all said, right. again, you know, being very nitpicky, it's fun to be nitpicky too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like to. Yeah. So that's a, it a moment, so it's mainly technical stuff, some some writing and editing stuff. But again, this, the the story so far is great. The acting is, is great. It's Star Wars. It's good. Now let's talk about some canon things. Just a couple of canon things and Easter eggy kind of sure. things. Sure. The big canon thing is the the Inquisitor, who is from the Star Wars Rebels cartoon, which is happening eight to nine years in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so he's obviously alive eight years from now gets killed at the end of the second episode. Well, he didn't get killed though. But so there's two ways to there's two ways to resolve this. Either it was a fake out and he didn't get killed, which if that's the case, it's like it's a device that's overused in Star Wars. You know, even Darth Maul who gets cut in half at the waist didn't apparently die. But you, you know, you can only do that so much. So that I think that would have been yeah, but there was no point to throw that in that use that device again. The other possibility is that it's not the same character. That it, they're, they're, we don't hear his name. They're both just the Grand Inquisitor. Yeah, but it, it looks exactly like the same guy. species. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. And now, and now, that, and now, <laughs> and now that you brought us back to to the yeah. bad guys, I've really concluded that the writing on the three of them, they these are the bumbling idiots. Yeah. That like when in the in the very first scene when they come in and the Grand Inquisitor is talking to the barkeep and he's intimidating him mm -hmm. and then the Jedi stops the dagger and the Jedi like drops the those like yeah. the cloth things yeah. and they, they let him get away. They never explained why because you can't say anything other than they let him get they away. They let him get away. They never explain why they let him get away. Well, I mean the to Inquisitor lead him, to lead him to but what it, we want. But it didn't it, it, it just seemed so weird. Like when I watched it, I'm like, they let him get away. That was ridiculous. They, but you know what? In really good movies, the scenes that don't make sense make sense to you later. And so, again, I'm not going to judge things like that until I see the rest of the series. Sure. All right. All right. Just but, didn't feel right. But you're right. In that moment, he let him get away. They, they basically let him get away. But, you know, the Inquisitor explicitly kept Reva from killing him. Yeah, but why, why didn't they? You see, th this is where... In storytelling, yeah, they need to. They need. This is when reshoots happen. Mm -hmm. The director and the editor are looking at what they got, and they go, "We're not fully telling the story. We have to go back and shoot a few more scenes." Mm -hmm. And it's things like you know, people looking at each other or mm -hmm. a hand on the shoulder. I know. Let, let him go, right? Imagine if the Grand Inquisitor just put his hand on one of those guys and said, "Let that him go." Been it. That then we know that there's intent yeah. there. But the fact is. The guy did something really like it was like a almost a, a cheesy thing that he did to drop those two little banner things that came down and, and that then, flummoxed them. And yeah. then the guy stops at it as if it stopped him. I'm standing there going, "Wow, I'm five minutes into this show and I'm already like seeing like 
stupidity, you know, just mm, not yeah. good choices. Not a good choice. All right. Right. But we don't, <laughs> but we don't know. Dead horse. We're beating this dead horse. No, we're, we're driving in, man. But, that, you, know, that, you know, again, this is the Inquisitor eight years ago. Maybe he's not as badass. He becomes more badass, you know, by by the cartoon. Yeah. yeah I, uh, again, but, he was, but I thought that was, he was a good, solid Star Wars lawful evil villain. Reva, again, has just got this one angry note, which isn't really working. You yeah. know, for me as as a villain, and again, but we there, there's obviously tension within the within the ranks of those guys. Yeah, sure, that's you know, the, she's yeah she's the she's, least of us. She's screwing up the play. You know, maybe he, he let him get away because she screwed up. Now it's they, her fault that he got away. They should have played her as more like subtly manipulating things in the background, yeah. and the other people don't know it. But because everybody ah. knows that she's basically like running her own yeah. game their side, here. Their side mission. It doesn't, it's not interesting. It would be cooler if she's like peering around corners and stuff like, you know, subtly manipulating things. So but she is, she is though impressive in some ways. I mean, for example, how many people know that Darth Vader is Anakin? How I, I know, and Bob, she knows. She figured that out. She sussed it out somehow. Not many people know a hand. But again, she probably was one of those kids who escaped. Well, I in the totally first think she probably, was, without yeah. a doubt. And I think that's why she's mad at at Obi Wan because she, he didn't come and sit and save mm -hmm. them. And um, and who was the, who was the uh, the woman Jedi Velthi? I think her name was Velthi Mass or something. Mm -hmm. She was fantastic. That cho choreography where she was yeah. like defeating. That you know, was a great scene. That was a great yeah, scene. Fun, I wanted yeah. to see more uh, about her. She was great. You know, I thought that um, it was a little odd that they started with orders. 66, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that was basically the intro to this series. Yeah, they wanted to connect it. I, I get it, but it, it, it just seemed a little, like, I want this to be about Obi-Wan. Mm -hmm. I want this whole thing to be about mm -hmm. him. And it really, if you think about it, we spent a lot of time away from him. Like, you know, they're, they're doing world building, right? And this is exactly what they told them when they gave them the first script. They said, it's not big enough. Mm -hmm. You didn't write the world big enough. You know, they want them yeah, yeah. to do some world, world building here. And their, their world building, though, took us away from Obi-Wan. Like, to me, I expected this to, the camera to always be on him, like, mm -hmm. following him. It's his story. Yeah. But it, it, it's but not... Star Wars is too big. It, it, yeah, I guess they just decided the that they're not... Too big. You know, the Mandalorian is in the in, in camera frame 98% of the time. Yeah. You know, like, they pull it off there. Like, I, I just figured it was going to be more like that. So I think, too, that they could mm -hmm. be setting up other TV shows. You know, you never know. You just mm -hmm. never know with what, what the plans are. Oh, we know there's more coming. You yeah. Know, there's more in the works. So, I mean, I think we're going to have to come back and review Oof. it at the end of the season. You know, when all six episodes yeah, we'll, are done. We'll definitely come back to it. We'll, we'll, we'll see how our predictions turned out, you know, and, and we'll be able to, to wrap it up, you know, in terms of, you know, how did they do. Um, again, I'm willing to let these things that don't make sense, and sometimes it turns out that they're not justified. Like we've said this about previous yeah. you know, reviews where we do, it's like, yeah, let's give it time, maybe it'll make sense in the end. And sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't. When it, when it does, it's a great payoff. And you realize, oh, that's why that didn't make sense, because really this was happening. Yeah. And that's, it's the thing is, your, your, your experience of it is always going to be better if you give the, the writers and the editors credit. At, at least until they they're proven to be bad, right? Sure, let, let it run credit, its course. Let it run its course. Then you you'll enjoy it more. It's it's this is a little bit artificial because again we're basically reviewing a movie a third of the way through, um, but yeah, but know, everybody's reviewing. But, this I know right but now. The, we uh, that's a, we're doing it because it's it is a series, not a movie, and people might be thinking, should I watch it or not? Go watch it. Absolutely. absolutely. You know, ab even, whether you're a Star Wars fan or not, it's great. Ewan McGregor is great. It's fun. It's 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 a lot of fun. It's you know it's a good thing on TV to watch at this point in time. And, you know, if you're a Star Wars fan, I think you'll like it. But there's a ton to, to nitpick. It's unfortunate. Of course, we all, we all want, because we are such fans, we want every episode to be knocked out of the park and for every scene to work perfectly well. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we are going to... high bar. To, we're going to nitpick when, when they don't do that. But it doesn't... Here's the difference. It's, it doesn't stop us from enjoying it. And no, I, I enjoy. I, of course, yeah. I am enjoying yeah. it. I mean, same with uh, Book of Boba Fett. Like, I, you know, there's a lot of there's things. A lot to nitpick there. But, but uh, I, yeah. I like being in the world. Yeah. And I think that Disney is is starting to get it. You know, Favreau and The Mandalorian to me yeah. is fantastic. Uh, so but, here's a, my one last comment though on all of these. And I have one after you. So when you're since you're bringing up the none. Mandalorian and Boba Fett, and now we got Obi Wan, is that. They're, Send more Luke. Yeah, well, <laughs> not the exact opposite, actually. I mean, unless they do something else. But the, the, they're telling the, they're filling inside the story. Yeah. 
You know, they're, hard to do. they're obsessed with this 20 year period or whatever, you know, where this all happened. I know because the Empire's gone and they want to recapture the Empire because, like, the, the conflict between the rebels and the Empire and the Empire being so evil with, you know, yeah. really drove Star Wars and they, they don't want to give that up. But I would love to see them flesh out some completely different parts of the Star like Wars. Like go back universe. a thousand years? Go back a thousand years, go in the future a hundred years. That's go too to risky a though. other end of the galaxy, you know, where maybe no one ever heard of the Sith or Jedi. Um, there's so many it's different too. ways you can flesh out this story. Like the, the, not just in, fill in the story, but expand yeah. the Star Wars uh, franchise and universe. Things. But so that much... takes completely new writing. Yes. Com you know, and, that's, and it takes balls. And it takes balls, yeah. and they don't have it. And I really yeah, wish yeah, they yeah. would just, you know, I, and I, I know, we've probably said before, like Jay and I ran a Star Wars um, tabletop game. I actually like some of the crap that we wrote better yeah. than anything I'm seeing out of Star Wars because we we were free to just do whatever the hell we want. Write yeah. completely new orders that use the Force and uh, whatever you, you could use. You could, you could. There's so much room for creativity within this world. But this if is you when give it to yourself. Canon can can shackle you too. Yeah, yeah. And that's part, <laughs> nice. that's part of the problem. Yep. Did you notice that Flea, the bass player yep. to the Red Hot Chili Peppers, yes. was the was the main yep. you know yep. bad guy of that little group? Yeah, yep. yep. and, and he did a good job. And and, you know? and, and um. Uh, the Boba Fett was there, the clone. Yeah. yeah. How cool was that? Yeah. That was now, a nice touch. I, 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 oh, my God. <laughs> Did you guys think about this? So you know that every clone trooper, almost all of them, have Order yeah. 66 embedded in their head, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. If he knew that he was standing in front of a Jedi, that would have activated it. And I thought, I really <gasps> thought, that when they put out the APB on... On mm -hmm. Obi Wan, he was gonna that activate. he was gonna go. There's a Jedi here, and just stand up and like get you know, Ooh. get to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, that cool would have been cool. cool that would have been cool. Anyway, I love and that was the actor, right? Yep. That, yeah. They had oh, him yeah. come in. Yeah, that's so cool. All right, guys. If you enjoy this episode, if you like Star Wars, we know you do. You could go to alphaquadrant6.com and check out other episodes that we have. You can go to our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash alphaquadrant and the number six. We also have a Patreon you can go to. I bet you can figure out how to get there on your own. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.